Now to continue with acute pancreatitis. Collaborative care. The goals of collaborative care for acute pancreatitis include relief of pain, prevention of shock, reduction of pancreatic secretions, correction of fluid and electrolyte imbalances, prevention and treatment of infections, and removal of the precipitating cause if possible. Conservative therapy and supportive care. Treatment is focused primarily on supportive care, including aggressive hydration, pain management, management of metabolic complications, and minimizing pancreatic stimulation. The treatment and control of pain are very important. IV morphine may be used. Pain medications may be combined with an antispasmodic anti agent. However, atropin and other anticholinergic drugs should be avoided when paralytic ileus is present because they can decrease GI motility, thus worsening the problem. Other medications that relax smooth muscles like spasmolytics such as nitroglycerin may be used. Supplemental oxygen is given to maintain oxygen saturation more than 95%. In patients with severe pancreatitis, serum glucose levels are closely monitored for hyperglycemia. It is important to reduce or suppress pancreatic enzymes to decrease stimulation of the pancreas and allow it to rest. This is accomplished in several ways. Firstly, the patient is kept NPO and secondly, NG tube to low intermittent wall suction may be used to reduce vomiting and gastric distension and prevent the gastric acidic con contents from entering the duodenum. In addition, certain drugs may be used to suppress gastric acid secretion. With the resolution of the pancreatitis, the patient will resume oral intake. For the patient with severe acute pancreatitis in whom oral intake is not resumed, Enteral nutrition may be initiated like TPN or PPN. If shock is present, blood volume replacements are used. Plasma or plasma volume expanders such as dextran or albumin may be given. Vasoactive drugs such as dopamine may be used to increase systemic vascular resistance in patients with ongoing hypotension. Fluid and electrolyte imbalances are corrected with IV fluids. Central venous pressure readings may be used to, ass to assist in determining fluid replacement requirements. Preventing infection. The inflamed and necrotic pancreatic tissue is a good medium for bacterial growth. In patients with acute necrotizing pancreatitis, infection is the leading cause of morbidity and mortality. Therefore, it is important to prevent infections. Because many of the organisms come from the intestines, enteral feeding reduces the risk of necrotizing pancreatitis. It is important to monitor the patient closely so that antibiotic therapy can be instituted early if necrosis and infection occur. Endoscopically or CT guided percutaneous aspiration of the fluid with gram stain and culture may be performed. Surgical therapy. When the acute pancreatitis is related to the presence of gallstones, an urgent ERCP plus endoscopic sphincterotomy or severing of the severing of the muscle layers of the sphincter of ordi may be performed. This may be followed by laparoscopic cholecystectomy to reduce the potential for recurrence. Surgical intervention may also be indicated when the diagnosis is uncertain and patients who do not respond to conservative therapy. Patients with severe acute pancreatitis may require drainage of the necrotic fluid collections. This can be done either surgically under CT guidance or endoscopically. Percutaneous drainage of a pseudocyst can be performed and a drainage tube is left in place. Drug therapy. Morphine is used for pain relief. Antispasmodics like bentol or dicyclamine 
is used to reduce the vagal stimulation, motility and pancreatic flow. It decreases volume and concentration of bicarbonate and enzyme secretion. It is um, antispasmodics are contraindicated in paralytic ileus. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitor or diamox helps to decrease the volume and bicarbonate concentration of the pancreatic secretions. Antacids are used for neutralization of gastric hydrochloric acid secretions. Decrease production and secretion of pancreatic decrease secretion of pancreatic enzymes and bicarbonate. Proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole is used to decrease HCL acid secretion. HCL acid stimulates pancreatic activity and that's why you want to decrease the HCL production. Nutritional therapy. Initially, the patient with acute pancreatitis is on NPO status to reduce pancreatic secretion. Depending on the severity of the pancreatitis, enteral feedings via the nasojejunal tube is initiated. Because of infection risk, parenteral nutrition is reserved for patients who cannot tolerate enteral nutrition. If IV lipids are ordered, blood triglyceride levels need to be monitored. When food is allowed, small frequent feedings are given. The diet is usually high in carbohydrate content because that is the least stimulating to the exocrine portion of the pancreas. Suspect intolerance to oral foods when the patient reports pain, has increasing abdominal girth, or has elevations in serum amylase and lipase levels. The patient needs to abstain from alcohol. Supplemental fat-soluble vitamins may be given. The nursing assessment. Obtain the following health information from the patient. Past health history, biliary, uh, past health history of biliary tract disease, alcohol use, abdominal trauma, journal ulcers, infection and metabolic disease. Subjective data includes use of thiazides, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, any surgeries or other treatments related to the pancreas, stomach, duodenum, biliary tract, any recent procedures of ERCP. Also obtain information regarding alcohol abuse, fatigue, presence of nausea, vomiting, anorexia, dyspnea, and pain. Other objective data regarding restlessness, anxiety, low-grade fever, flushing, diaphoresis, discoloration of abdomen, abdomen and flank, the Cullen sign or the Turner sign is um, assessed. Um, collect data regarding cyanosis, jaundice, decreased skin turgor and dry mucous membrane. Tachypnea, basilar, crackles in the lungs, tachycardia, hypotension, abdominal distension and tenderness, and diminished bowel sound. Abnormal lab findings are also assessed. Um, in particular, the serum amylase and lipase levels are increased, leukocytosis showing infection, hyperglycemia, hypocalcemia, abnormal findings on the ultrasound or CT scans, and abnormal findings on the ERCP. Nursing diagnosis. <coughs> the following are the nursing diagnoses that may be formulated. Acute pain related to distension of pancreas, peritoneal irritation, obstruction of biliary tract and ineffective pain and comfort measures. Deficient fluid volume related to nausea, vomiting, restricted oral intake and fluid shift into the retrosperitoneal space. Imbalanced nutrition related less than body requirements related to anorexia, dietary restrictions, nausea, loss of nutrients from vomiting and impaired digestion. Ineffective self-health management related to lack of knowledge of preventive measures, diet restrictions, alcohol restriction intake, and follow-up care. The goals will be that the patient will experience relief of pain will maintain normal fluid and electrolyte balance, will develop minimal to no complications, and patient will have no recurrent attack.
health promotion. The major factors involved in health promotion are assessment of the patient for predisposing and ideological factors and encouragement of early treatment of these factors to prevent occurrence of acute pancreatitis. Encourage early diagnosis and treatment of biliary tract disease such as cholelithiasis. Encourage the patient to eliminate alcohol intake, especially if there have been any previous episodes of pancreatitis. Attacks of pancreatitis becomes milder or disappear with the discontinuance of alcohol intake. Acute intervention. During the acute phase, it is important to monitor vital signs. Hemodynamic stability may be compromised by hypotension, fever, and tachypnea. Respiratory failure may develop in the patients with severe acute pancreatitis. Assess respiratory function, example lung sounds, oxygen saturation levels. If ARDS develops, the patient may require intubation and mechanical ventilatory support. Monitor the response to IV fluids. Closely monitor fluid and electrolyte balance. Frequent vomiting along with gastric suction may result in decreases in chloride, sodium, and potassium levels. Because hypocalcemia can also occur, observe for symptoms of tetany such as jerking, irritability, and muscular twitching. Numbness or tingling around the lips and in the fingers is an early indicator of hypocalcemia. Assess the patient for positive chostic sign or the truzo sign. Calcium gluconate should be given to treat symptomatic hypocalcemia. Hypomagnesemia may also develop, necessitating the monitoring of serum magnesium levels. The picture shows monitoring for tetany. Chostic sign is the contraction of facial muscles in response to a light tap over the facial nerve in front of the ear. And B is a troso sign, um, a corporal spasm induced by inflation of a blood pressure cuff above the systolic pressure for a few minutes. Because abdominal pain is a prominent symptom of pancreatitis, a major focus of your care is relief of pain. Pain and restlessness can increase the metabolic rate and subsequent stimulation of pancreatic enzymes. In addition, acute pain can contribute to hemodynamic instability. Morphine may be used, a position of comfort with frequent position changes is done. A fetal position or a side laying position with the head of the bed elevated at 45 degrees sometimes help to prevent the pressure on the abdomen and helps to reduce pain. Patients with NPO status and has an NG tube needs to be given frequent oral and nasal care and administration of antacids to reduce the GI secretions is also done. Observe for fever and other manifestations of infection in the patient with acute pancreatitis. Respiratory infections are common because the retroperitoneal fluid raises the diaphragm, which causes the patient to take shallow, guarded abdominal breaths. Measures to prevent respiratory infections include turning, coughing, and deep breathing, and assuming a semi fallous position. Other important assessments are observation for signs of paralytic ileus, renal failure, and mental changes. Monitor serum glucose levels. After pancreatic surgery, the patient may require special wound care for an anastomotic leak or a fistula. Because of loss of physical and muscle strength, physical therapy may be needed. And because frequent doses of opioids are required for this patient, during the acute stage, follow-up for assessment of possible opioid addiction may be indicated. This problem is more likely to occur with chronic pancreatitis than with acute pancreatitis. Counseling regarding abstinence from alcohol is also important to prevent future attacks of pancreatitis. To summarize, we went through the definition of pancreatitis, the clinical manifestations, complications, diagnostic tasks, treatment, and nursing management.